Good afternoon to you. Mark Suttoth, HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for August the 3rd, 2016. Let's take a look at what is now Hurricane Earl. And you remember yesterday when I said it looked nebulous? Well, today it doesn't look that way. You can see spiral banding taking shape here, an absolute dramatic change from what we saw yesterday. It looks like a Category 1 hurricane. It no longer has that diffuse spread out as I called it, nebulous look, and it is headed towards Belize here for a landfall, and that'll bring hurricane conditions. I'll talk about the effects in just a moment. This is the forecast track map from the National Hurricane Center based on the 11 a.m. advisory Eastern Time, and you can see that it is just off the north coast of Honduras now, headed towards a landfall here right in central Belize. So areas to the north of this track here if you look at it in quadrants, right up in here will be where the worst of the effects are felt. The onshore flow, this is going to be an easterly wind that's thrown uh, right in here along the coast. This right angle doesn't help things. The water uh, doesn't have much you know, spreading out to do. Uh, it's kind of trapped up in here. So there will be a storm surge of several feet along the coast here, especially in any protected areas where bays uh, and sheltered coves that water could pile in there pretty efficiently so people need to be ready for that and also with these deep tropical thunderstorms developing in these bands around the hurricane very heavy rainfall is possible and then of course the probability of hurricane force winds but I'm not as worried about the wind typically people are more prepared for that buildings are fairly substantial in the area and I'm just more worried about the water. Water has killed more people, whether it be from storm surge or from freshwater flooding from too much rainfall, than wind has by far. So uh, here in Belize, again, depending on where that center comes ashore, it's this area along that right front quadrant that would have the biggest impact. And exactly where that happens, in terms of the precise landfall location of the center, is hard to know right now and just remember kind of looking at this as it goes along you know the center is going to track something like that but you have effects away from the center on the north and effects on the south so if the eye comes over the uh, specific location remember that the effects extend away from that you know just trying to get away from this idea of tracking a point on a map all of these positions here and anytime you track uh, a hurricane in an app or online or whatever, these are the center positions. The effects, of course, then extend well away from that. Earl has a lot of upper ocean heat content to take advantage of still in this area, so the chance for it to become strong, eh, it's there. I don't think it has the potential to rapidly intensify to, say, a Category 3, but if it peaked out at 95 to 100 miles per hour, category two that wouldn't surprise me but again I'm not as worried about the wind because you usually don't see the sampled wind from the hurricane hunters on shore there's just too many dynamics going on that when they report you know 120 mile per hour wind or 80 mile per hour wind that's not everywhere in the hurricane that's where the hurricane hunter happened to be or where the drop sign measured it and that particular rain band or thunderstorm complex waxes and wanes moves on whatever so it's impossible to really nail down the wind field so just generally expecting hurricane conditions in terms of 75 mile per hour winds or greater people need to be prepared for that now if we see a very well developed hurricane like an Andrew or a Camille for example coming ashore somewhere where the wind damage is going to be absolutely mind-blowing, then we can talk about that. But this is not that situation. Uh, a close-up of the Caribbean Sea. Again, it's passing now right over this area of fairly high ocean heat content. The center, the core of Earl, will go right through here, just on the edge of the highest. But certainly those feeder bands pulling in some of that energy uh, over the highest ocean heat content in the Western Hemisphere. Remember when I was talking about the weird shape to it yesterday, it had these sort of lobes of energy? Well, 
I love the uh, University of Wisconsin maps here, but with a tropical storm symbol over it, I can't show it quite as well, but you can see it looks a little bit more like a teardrop today, uh, the vorticity signature that is. Uh, basically, it's more round, all right? You don't have these arms coming off like you see out here with this tropical system, uh, this little tropical disturbance coming off of Africa. Earl has definitely become better organized, and you can see that even here in the vorticity signature. Upper level winds, favorable. You have this uh, anticyclonic flow over the system and all these little wind barbs in here, kind of hard to see. Try to zoom in a little bit more. Um, none of them are very strong. Five, 10 knots of upper level wind flow through here. And the main thing, let me zoom back out. Notice up here in the higher latitudes, I have sort of this band of winds coming across, for example. You don't have that down here. The winds are coming out in a clockwise direction in this anticyclonic flow. Uh, terrible representation of that, but the idea that we don't have wind coming across it, shearing it, is important. So that's allowing, if we go back to the satellite picture one more time, for these thunderstorms to develop upward and for the air to spread out evenly around it. It's not the best outflow we've ever seen, but we don't have wind cutting across the system and stretching the clouds out like cotton candy. And that's another indication that it is indeed strengthening. So this is the very latest GFS. I mean, it's still rendering on the NSEP servers. And I wanted to show you this. Uh, this is that 850 millibar, or about 5,000 feet in the atmosphere chart, showing the vorticity signature, uh, or spin in the atmosphere. And it also represents the amount of energy going on with that. We won't get into the meteorological or mathematical details, but we can at least look at what's what, okay? And you notice, first of all, you got this area of high pressure here, keeping uh, our system buried down in the Caribbean Sea, a well-established deep layer high pressure that was mentioned in today's discussion. And this, <clears throat> of course, is Hurricane Earl. Now watch what happens here as I step through the frames. Luckily, the GFS is every three hours now each of these frames. And if I go back to the beginning, you notice how it has a little bit of a bend back towards the west, and then it looks like it goes south of west just a little bit. So maybe a landfall here in southern Belize is uh, possible. And if I scroll up, we can see what time frame that is. Roughly 18 hours out. So between 18 and 24 hours, this should make landfall in Belize. And then it cuts across northern Guatemala and then on into Mexico with a trek over the extreme southern Bay of Campeche here, and it may just die out over land. So it looks like, according to the GFS, the very latest run here, this is going to come in the southern part of Belize, uh, and so areas north of there. Belize City could be right in that right front quadrant. So uh, be ready. This is a hurricane headed your way. Not much more else that I uh, not much else that I can add to this. Um, when landfall is imminent, it's imminent, right? You better be ready. And you know, luckily this isn't a catastrophic hurricane, but we don't want to downplay the risks and the impacts that are coming. And I want to emphasize that storm surge one more time: three to five feet, maybe locally higher, uh, with large damaging waves coming in on top of that, right at the coastline, plus the very heavy rain. And then certainly a third on the list, I would worry about the wind. I think most people know enough to stay out of the wind, but you don't want to stay out of the wind if you're too close to where the surge is and you get drowned. Uh, so that's the problem here, trying to communicate the impact and how to handle each particular storm or hurricane in certain geographic areas. So hopefully this makes sense for folks down there and they will be ready and um, this will pass. and the area can get back to normal. It is beautiful down there for sure. All right, well, that's it for me for today. Again, I'm Mark Suttis for HurricaneTrack.com. Thanks, as always, for tuning in, and I'll be back with more uh, tomorrow.